Rutherford from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario here with your Sunday night family show. Pioneer question and answer. Will we talk anything and everything related to pigeons? Post your questions, comments below, and Ryan, Richard, or myself will do our best to answer them or anybody in go. the audience. Take it away, Ryan and Richard. Well, congratulations, Leah. Leah really busted her butt this weekend. She got the pigeon bingo up and going. 400 squares now available. Leah, how many? have we sold 100 already? Is that what I'm hearing in my ear? Um, I haven't checked yet. I'm just checking to make sure we're on Facebook and YouTube. So just give me, I'll let you know when I make sure we're on. But uh, no, talk. go ahead and talk about it. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, now, Leah spent all weekend loading the pigeon bingo. 400 squares loaded up on FIPA.ca or Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. It's great. What is pigeon bingo? It's a lot of fun. We're raising money for our new trailer that we're building. Bill Weem is building it. Go on. Buy a square. Buy two squares. Buy five squares. Buy as many squares as you want. And you're able to win cold hard cash in our pigeon bingo. We have squares at $15 at $25. And those magical squares that can either make you $1,000 or a brand new Benzing clock. Those are our $50. You'll see them. They're blue. They say Benzing. If you purchase one of those squares, and when we play Pigeon Bingo, <coughs> a bird shits on your square, you are the winner. You will win the cash prizes, or you will win the Benzing clock. Every square <laughs> will be a winner as long as we sell all 400 squares. Uh, uh, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Okay, so what happens, like your squares... If you get a dropping that goes on to two squares, or well, what we do like is a quarter square. Like, and, and you these know, are all questions that people uh, want to ask. Right? You know what? And I'm happy, Richard, that you came out with some of these these questions right. because it's it's you're like the person on the other side here watching. What does this mean? Well, it's really quite simple. Nora, I am turn around. I am. Okay, there you go. I am the official referee, right? So I will be making that corporate decision. See, we don't know who bought what. Only Leah knows who bought the squares. So the so dropping, dropping the dropping with the most on the square will be the winner. Okay. So if there's no if you if, if it's shit onto two squares and one has 75% of that shit, unfortunately, he's gonna be the winner. And the guy with only 25% of the shit, he just didn't get shit on enough. Do you have any other questions, Ricky? I'm thinking. Okay, well, when you have one, we're going to let Leah fire away. Go ahead there, Leah. I think this I is a good question. Great. Because to... Oh, we got some connection issues there in the clubhouse. Ryan, oh, talk, please. Type. Yep. There we go. That's and uh, so it's, it's a good question to Perfect. ask. Uh, the rules, are you like a referee? or? I, I, I'm, I am the official pioneer referee. Okay. Go ahead, Leah. I'm going to give a shout out to everybody who's tuned in. Frank Icorn, Ricky Cruz, Owen Cleveley, Robert Simpson, Henry is in the house, Barbie and Gerard, Gerard and Barbie, happy birthday, Gerard, Trevor from Niagara Falls is in the house, Neil Gonzalez, Kathy Icorn, and nobody on YouTube yet. Well, we do have four viewers, but nobody's saying hello. So I want to give a shout out to everybody on YouTube. Guys, if you have questions regarding <laughs> pigeon bingo, pigeon health, pigeon care, Pigeon racing, our one loft race, our band race, our trailer, next year's band race. Any questions you have, now is the time. Put them in the comments. We will do our best to answer them. No questions yet, Ryan. What do you want to talk about first? Um, well, well I, I, I would want to mention, and I don't know if Leah uh, has done it once before, but to... Um, do you, do you want me to get Leah to just do a, this? What you yeah, asked? So to the Leah, rescue. The, the rescue. Leah, do you want to talk did. about the rescue program here that you're on? <clears throat> the rescue program? Oh, the birds that uh, Dad yeah. and Gerard. Yeah. Rescue. Yeah, and oh. Emily, and uh, not Emily. Um, oh, uh, uh, oh. Barbie. Sha Sha oh, Barbie, and your new friend, uh, Shauna. 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 Yeah, uh, she was the one that uh, triggered this because she knew Gerard was a 
he's a member of the Pioneer Pigeon Club, and it was like 6.30 in the morning uh, that these birds were getting run over on uh, Elgin Mills and Kennedy Road. And, uh, you know, I just say, and then Gerard called me, who's a member of our club, Pioneer Club, and he called me like 911. We've got to get over here. There's birds getting run over by cars that people had, uh, one person had dumped off on the right on the shoulder of the road. And then uh, I got involved. Uh, um, Barbie, who is uh, Gerard's wife, she got involved. And the next thing, we were over there rescuing bird, rescuing birds. And I, I you know, I just want to say, uh, it's a hundred percent, Gerard or Barbie, Gerard. We myself. know the people. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. them. What do you want to say about? We were out there in the pouring rain. You were rescuing. And how are they doing now? Course, well, we still have another about thirty. Mm -hmm. 33 to, uh, to, to, to rescue, mm -hmm. to catch. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, I'm thanking well, well, myself. Actually, but. we should be thanking you. You don't have to thank yourself. You did a hell of a job there yeah, collecting right. those so, birds. Uh, I was, you know. Good job. We, we absolutely want to thank Gerard and Barbie and loft manager Richard for taking the time out of their day, days, this past week to go and help rescue these poor abandoned birds for whatever reason they were abandoned. Um, but thank you guys for stepping up to the plate uh, and doing that. That's fantastic. And I know that there's a lot of talk over on FB about we need to catch this person and we need to make them pay. And, and I think my oh. question is, why is it that this happened? Why is it that fanciers in our area feel that that is the only option if the town comes to them and says, you got to get rid of your birds or you're going to get a fine? Or if the birds are sick and the fellow is frustrated or the lady is frustrated and decides, I can't do this anymore, I got to get rid of them. I think we need, as pigeon fanciers in the area, to create more of a support system for one another where where if somebody is struggling or they have a problem that they know that they can go to somebody and somebody is going to try and help them or figure out no, a but, way to either rehome yeah. them or give them medication or help them or guide them. I think that's where we're lacking here, right? Yeah, I, I believe it or not, uh, what's the lady's name, Shauna? Sh Sh Shona. So, uh, Barbie Sh Gerard, Shona. Shona. Gerard, wait a minute. Gerard and Barbie mm -hmm. said that my friend... I think it's Shona. I hope I'm not saying it wrong. Uh, gave a yeah. hundred dollars today to help pay pay for the care of those birds. You know that's fantastic. Right. That's very nice. Appreciate she, it. She's and, not uh, even a pigeon flyer yeah. or a pigeon person. She is just um, a bystander who watched right. all this go down. And I spoke with this uh, lady today, and believe it or not, she went to Walmart, and she said. I've got to get, uh, there's still 33 birds, I think, out there we didn't get. Because the birds get a bit smart and they start flying up in the trees. The, the three of us, we captured, one day we captured 14 of them with, uh, no, 116, sorry, with fish nets. The next day we, we caught another seven. And uh, I think Shauna, she caught one today and one yesterday, okay. The birds are getting smart. There's still about 30, 33 birds on the, on the ground. But I'm just going to say something. She went to Walmart to get some wild birds feed to feed these birds. And uh, they got it all uh, barred off like uh, because of the COVID. Mm -hmm. You can't get feed. Mm -hmm. You can't go in that all department. Right. Yep. And she was so upset. She got the manager and said, hey, I need feed. I got birds out here that are sitting on the ground. Mm -hmm. they, like, uh, she's right. concerned. And the manager said, no, I can't get you feed. This is closed off. Well, she got upset. Next thing, 
she had about 20 people standing around her saying, I know you've blocked us off. Mm -hmm. This woman needs feed for these birds. She's not lying. And then she, they all prost uh, protested and she got the feed. The manager just went, got a bag of feed and gave it to her. So I'm just saying she has, uh, she went more than Ab above 100 and beyond. miles. Above and yeah. beyond. Above, yeah. And, uh, and she's not even a pigeon keeper, a pigeon. She doesn't even have pigeons. She's just a, you know, and the, and the thing that where everybody went to the Walmart and then they complained <laughs> about the bird seed. I mean, that's the power of standing up for something that you believe in, right? That what you feel is a, an injustice. Well, that, Maybe we could just get the dog and put the dog in the house because I can hear it screeching in my ears. It's, it's a great episode thing. It's that scouty. She does it. Don't bring her in here. She knows where I am. Yeah, don't bring her in here. She's looking for LMR. Uh, Mike, Mike Vanderyak is asking, Come have you confirmed the breed? Come on. Yeah, you guys, you guys apparently did. Uh, what are they? They're, they're uh, what's the name of them? I believe what are, what are, we believe that they are uh, Ukrainian sky cutters. I, yeah, I keep Ukrainian saying sky cutters. divers, but I'm pretty sure it's sky cutters. Ukrainian sky no, cutters. They're sky scra uh, scrapers or something? Sky, sky scrapers. Sky cutters. Sky cutters. Yep. That's what they're called. Probably we go to we go to Ukraine, and you know what? They'll give us another name. For for them. <laughs> no, I watch on the uh, internet. Mm -hmm. They're amazing to watch them fly. Well, you're going to get to fly they, some. They go up like a helicopter. They go straight up. They don't, like uh, a lot of uh, other birds, they go out and they fly around the trees and they go this way, they go that way. These things, they go straight up and they just go straight up and they do their fly and then they come straight down. It's amazing. To watch them on the internet. Uh, Mike Vander, but, I guess, and, and, what what did the original owner say? We don't know who the original we owner don't, is. We don't, we don't know, know who, who it is. It, no. And, there and was sad, about, sa sadly, there was uh, about five or six of them that did have bands on them. And Guido was yeah. nice enough. I gave the band numbers to Guido Madruzin. Uh, and yeah. he was nice enough to follow up uh, with the NPA or whatever association those bands belong to but unfortunately their record keeping wasn't wasn't up to so, snuff uh, and uh, 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 he wasn't able to right. locate the uh, all, all all i can say on this issue there was 20 to 30 birds in the intersection that got flatted out by traffic and and then uh what uh, uh sonia uh whatever the lady's name she said she watched it and the other birds came into the slaughtered birds uh, and and grouped on top and then the traffic kept coming and it was like uh, if you could speak with her it was like a massacre she couldn't believe it people didn't even go around them they just kept running on them and she actually chased down one of the drivers mm -hmm. got his plate number and you know um it was uh, a sad scene and, and and the other thing is so we've captured uh, uh barbie gerard myself we captured 116 mm -hmm. and then the next day we got another seven all right we're repeating ourselves and, and, okay you, you, you caught these birds. okay so what what, yeah. what i'm saying right now is uh the person who dropped these birds off had probably 170 birds he dropped off. So that means, and they're all the same. Hey, listen. That means we, this we fellow. Got, we got to give him points for guess what? For what? Moron of the week. Yeah. Sorry to say that, but you know what? There, I never seen people do such stupid stuff in my life. But you know what? In this world, it's great. You see it all, don't you? Yeah, you we sure do. There's your moron of the week. When you see the guy who does it, give him a hug, drag him out into the middle of the traffic, and take him out on the 401, and let's see how he dances through the 401 traffic. That's good. Uh, Mike Jeez. says, I thought they had telephone numbers on their bands. As I said, I gave all the bands to Guido Madruzin, who said he was going to follow up with the bands. Our concern was rest, getting the birds uh, safe in our facility 
and care for them. I'm not going on a wild goose chase to go and hunt for somebody, some, excuse my language, asshole who did that. My focus, our focus, are the pigeons and making sure they're safe. And, 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 and Guido Madrizin going... or the SPCA or whatever other organization is out there, they can hunt the person down and they can deal with them. That's not our job. Uh, you know, I hate to say this as well, but the SPCA, they uh, were called, I believe uh, Shauna called them or Gerard called them, and they showed up. All they did was clean up the bodies off the side of the road. Wow. They didn't even look at the birds that were sitting uh, off, off to the side. And, and you know, that's that's kind of a sad and, thing, too. And, and I, I also have heard around the rumor mill that there are individuals who know who this person is who did this. If you know who yeah, this person right. is who did this, then perhaps you should report them to, I don't know, somebody, an organization, the SPCA, the police. That's not our job to do that. Right. But if as I long can, as I, the birds at the end of the day are safe and healthy, that's what I'm worried about. Okay. If I can make another comment, uh, being a member uh, of, the, uh, of the CU for, uh, I don't know, 40 years, 50 years, well, and you're no longer her, a member. Her, Remember, her, no, I'm not a member out. now. But, hold but, but no, it, hold wait, on. in hold my on. heart, in my heart, the, the, one of the rules was, it, uh, one of the thing uh, rules, what, what if someone rules? calls you huh? and says. Oh, well, uh, his mic has cut out. Your mic has cut out. Oh, boy. His mic has cut out. I can pretend what he's saying. Maybe I could lift. Lip read. They don't know that the mic is dead. I'm not sure what he's saying, but it's very important, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, God, I love technology. Okay, guys. When will they realize that we can't hear them? Unless you guys can hear them and it's just me who can't hear them. If you can hear Richard or you can't hear him, please let me know in the comments because something's not working. Oh, this is frustrating. Okay. Can anybody hear them? Because I can't. Oh, I love my job. Just one second here. No. Okay. Thank you, Mandy. You can't hear. All right. Okay. Thank you. We cannot hear you. It's not working. Sorry, guys. Just bear with me here for a second. We've got some audio issues. Oh, Ryan says one second. He's trying to rehook up his iPad. Sorry, guys. But you can hear me. Okay, Tony can hear me, but we can't hear the boys. All right. So he's going to reconnect. Just give me one second. <laughs> and we're going to have to hear that, that rant from Loft Manager Richard all over again in a second while we get reconnected. All right, maybe while they're getting reconnected, what can I show everybody? I will show everybody, in case you guys haven't seen, we do have some new country hats available. Look how nice those are. We've got the United Kingdom, Belgium, uh, Ireland, Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, USA, and Scotland. They are $20 each or two for $35. We have limited qualities quantities available so get them now because I don't know if we're going to be ordering them again and we just got them in so get them now what else can we talk about um anybody got any questions okay Mandy you want to talk about bingo we'll talk about bingo there is the bingo board and you guys can see the bingo board at fipa.ca where you go to reserve your bingo squares does anybody have questions about bingo that perhaps I can answer. We've got probably about 20 squares sold now, I think around there. So thank you guys very much. Everybody who did purchase squares already, we really do appreciate it. Um, somebody wants to buy a basket. Uh, okay, where are you located? Um, Melidos, you, you I there, probably Leah? said that wrong, but where are you located? Yes, I am here, they are back. 
Okay. Right. So just, just, just let's just, let's just, let's just hold on. I'm trying to get my other switcher back up on here. So we're going to have to talk this well, level so she can hear here. Right. Okay. So, so what were uh, we, we didn't, saying? We didn't hear any of that. Um, Loft manager we're Richard, when you were talking about the CU or whatever, we missed that part. So what I what I'm saying is, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just saying, as being a pigeon flyer, a fancier out of a certain group, uh, I don't know what the roller club does, Fanto club, Tipper club, all those clubs. I don't know what they do, but I just know as being a pigeon uh, flyer with the CU, with the AU, uh, those organizations, the rule is if someone calls you and says, I live somewhere, there's been a pigeon on my patio for two, th two days, three days, five days, I need help. Then as a member of the CU, the AU, the IF, uh, those clubs in racing pigeon business, you sh you are, uh, uh, what should I say? You must go and help those people out. Yeah, but we're not. Yeah, what's but, the, they don't do that. They don't implement that. They no, don't even stand up for the guys in the union. So no, who cares? But so not, like they don't stand for anything. I don't care if they're barn plugs. So, so we don't I'm gonna go and what? help. And part of the pioneer, part of the pioneer is, Right. I don't care if you're in the one off race, you're in the old bird race, you're in whatever race you're in here in Pioneer Village. If you don't put your best to go and help somebody out, and I find out about it, not Leah find out, not you, I do. It's real simple. You're going to be out. Why? Because you can do better. You have to go and help. Uh, uh, Shauna, I believe, she called Gerard. Gerard's a pigeon, uh, 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 racing pigeon man. He said, We know. It's my duty to help to get these birds. He didn't look at them and say, oh, they're uh, 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 whatever they are, some kind of high flyers. Oh, I'm not interested. I'm a racing pigeon man. No, he went, he called me up and we went to help. And you guys did a great job and we really do thank it. Uh, thank you guys for that. Um, Want to give a shout out on YouTube, Jason Mihalik. Stephen is in the house. Uh, Jason says, I used to have high flyers in Europe. Maybe these birds were up on the high and flying, and because of the weather, they were pushed away and all of them got lost. I mean, I think that's a nice thought, but with no, that... No, basket, there's baskets the, in the field. They, they were dumped there off. No and baskets were, in the well, there was, there were whatever they were there, they were all dumped off in a spot. Okay. I understand what he's saying, but Jason, there was 100, at least 150, 170 birds if you're a Tipler flyer, you don't fly that kind of group of birds. The, the maximum as a Tipler flyer, you might fly five, maybe to 15, 20 right. birds, but not 150, right. 170 right. birds. We can see whatever we want. And, and one, one guy said, uh, one guy called in and said, well, maybe the baskets fell off a truck. Well, there's no baskets there. The birds were dumped. Sad, and, 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 sa sadly, they were dumped. And loft manager Richard gets just as fired up about this as I do. Um, it's just very upsetting and disturbing. Um, Mandy says that uh, Jim has drove all over to pick up lost pigeons, as you do, as as that is your response. You know, as a pigeon flyer keeper, <laughs> I feel that's your responsibility to do that. If somebody finds a bird that's yours, you better go and pick it up. Uh, Tony yeah. says, I believe in this case, it is more like the CPFA would be the more appropriate body. He humbly thinks, uh, Mike Bandiak says, look like, looked like a broken dog crate on the side of the road. Yeah. We, you know, we don't know. And as far as who should be responsible for it as pigeon flyers, as pigeon keepers, we're all responsible for it. I don't care what organization. If you're the CU, the AU, the CPFA, I don't care. We are all responsible for these birds. And and it's a reflection on us. So we all have to do our part. Let, let me give you a situation. I'm living here in north of Toronto. And I may get a call from somebody in Ottawa. And they say, oh, I got your number from someone. I have a pigeon around uh, my 
uh, garage. Uh, he's been here. He's skinny, whatever it is. So uh, I'm going to put these on now. Just put them on. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Keep we, we can. We can. I got this bird. So you know what I do? I can't drive to Ottawa. So what I'll do is I'll look up a pigeon flyer in, in the club. And I say, hey, it's uh, I'm Richard Lonigan. I got a report of a bird. He's hanging out in Ottawa uh, in somebody's garage. I don't know what it is. Could be a fantail. It could be a tippler. It could be anything. I'm saying, hey, my friend, do me a favor. Can you please just go over to this location, this house, and please just say, go and get the bird and save it and take just take care of it. Right. And that's what you got to do. Right. Right. Okay. That's it. Right. All right. On that note, we got this. Okay. Up, so we got that. this. Okay. The Ryan's back in the uh, back well, into the uh, well, what do you call this computer game here? Yeah, I'm not sure how and it's going to work. Take a look at this. Can we see this little girl? Right. It's going to work Let, good now. Let's move on to happier topics. And we wanted to show, Loft Manage yeah. Richard wanted to show this little cutie pie. This yeah. is a little baby we, fantail. How old is this, this little one here? Uh, she's probably about uh, 16 days old. And 16 days old. Look at how cute. Yeah. A little hen. You can see her, and we should give her a name. And uh, you know, one thing I want to say to you guys, some of you top-notch professional racing pigeon people, uh, you're going to say, oh, what's he showing now? Well, I think this can bring me back to my childhood. This is a very nice little thing. It's. Uh, I'm just saying, there's some guys, you got to become – a pigeon lover, a pigeon keeper, then a pigeon flyer, then a trophy flyer at the end. If you're not that, if you work backwards, I got a lot of money. I just bought expensive pigeons, so I'm going to win trophies. Guess what? You're not going to win trophies, my friend, because you never became a pigeon keeper. And we're going back here, and when I say, when I see this little thing here, I got no use for this bird. As a back to my childhood. And I'm saying, I think we should all go back to our childhood. And if you're a trophy flyer, stop and think. Let's go back to our childhood. And this is this little girl here, uh, Dominic. Hmm? Uh, he, 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 he uh, as a gift yeah gave us some birds yeah. and you know what I it was remember. great we we, rest, we we got all of their calls we wanted them we're using them in the pioneer yeah now we got some babies and i said to dominic one day he's going to watch on the pioneer landing board we're going to put out a whole group of young little baby fantails and he's going to look and you know what he's going to say <laughs> holy jumping you've read a super well one. and dominic and dominic is a top fantail breeder and he he gave us some of his calls and we said we'll take them and the, for me as a racing pigeon man they're very hard to raise i took them i took some in and i thought i'm going to raise them i cut their tails like back so they can tread and you know i got uh, i got one i got one pair hatched uh, right and so there's two in the nest and i said okay the larger one was going to be the cock and I left him with the parents, and I took this little girl here, and I put her with a pumper, mm -hmm. right? Icelandic white yep. pumper, and she's going good. But the uh, her brother, mm -hmm. I left with the parents, fantail parents. They screwed up. They dragged him out. They dragged the baby out of the nest by accident. Then it got chilled, and it died. So she, uh, she's a lone survivor. She, she's a lone survivor, and look at her. <laughs> She's so cute. She's, yeah, she is cute. She's so ugly. She's cute. <laughs> no, yeah. she's very, she's very cute. Um, uh, let me get to the comments here. Mandy says she votes for Fanny because it's a fantail hen. Fanny, that's a cute name. Yeah, Fanny, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike Vandriak hey. is asking, can we see a young son of Rusty? <laughs> where's oh, Where's the uh, sons Rusty. of Rusty? Okay, sons of Rusty, I got, uh, not the sons, I got a son and a daughter, uh -huh. 
right? A pair, and I can bring them out right now. All right. Well, actually, why, why, got, don't do that, this... why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Because Mike's asked Put a couple a couple you. weeks now. So why don't you go and? All right, Mike, you're gonna get yeah, your wish. I'll bring you're gonna right see. Now. Give me one. A son but, and daughter uh, I just want, of Rusty. Go just, ahead. Can you get, can ahead, you get Rusty? Okay, well, no, yeah. Rusty, the, the parent, the, the young ones. Ricky, yeah. follow the ball and put the dog away before we hear dogs barking. Guys, Brian's it's a, like Brian's a just... little cranky today. Um, Owen is asking, does LMR what? have fantails for sale? Does LMR have fantails for sale? Does, is he Man, selling them? I'm really not sure how many he has. Right, right now, I don't think we're selling them because I we need them for the Pioneer One Loft. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get a nice little collection of them so we can have them out on the board on race day or on the training toss days just to add a little calmness to the board. Um, so I'm sure he will, but not not right yet. Um, we're just sort of getting started here with them. I'm back over to YouTube. Jason Mihalik says 7,000 7, pigeons were lost a few years ago in a Europe race and they were never recovered. Yeah, very sad, Jason. Very sad. Um, Henry says that he had a pair of fantails when he was younger, but they would never breed. Found out that he had two males. Well, it happens, Henry. <laughs> it's, it's hard to it's hard to get eggs from cocks, Henry. You gotta always remember that. <laughs> uh, uh, and Mike says that since Fanny was weaned in May, her name's going to be Fanny May. That's a great name, guys. Fanny May, look at this boy, oh boy. <laughs> Does she need a middle name though? That's the question, guys. Yeah, does she need a middle name? <laughs> I want to get crazy. All right, guys, anybody have any questions? While well, loft manager Richard goes and gets son and daughter of Rusty. If not, Ryan, what would you like to talk about next? Where's she going? She's just going to stay here. Okay. Oh, he's got them now, so before I get into anything. All right. So, so here we go. She is a son mm -hmm. of Rusty. So here, why don't you first just give me the sun? This is a big, big moves here going on, Liam. Big moves. Look at a little. We call, okay. We're calling her Fanny May because she was born in May. Son and daughter. Okay. Of Rusty. What are we calling her? Fanny May. Fanny May. Fanny May. That's a son. There's the son of Rusty. Yeah. And this is the uh, sister, the daughter of. But that's brother and sister. Now you see. We're gonna call the black one. We should call her Snow White. But you can, can you, see. Ryan, can you just fix that that, um, that one camera? I'll just uh, move it up a little more. Sorry, guys. <coughs> that camera is not the best quality. If you want to put him up there. Okay. You can see he's definitely the cockbird. He's gonna be a big boy. So for uh, he anybody. He looks just like his dad. For any of you guys who followed along last year, these are both from Rusty, right? Yeah. yeah. Oops. Oops. Get up there, boy. Let me do this. Maybe you guys can see them a little better. Okay, so these are uh, Spanish powders? Powders? Yeah, Spanish, Spanish powders. Thief, Spanish thief powders. And how old are these yeah. guys? Uh, got to be... Their tails are about an inch long or more, so they got to be about 18 days old. I weaned them a few days ago, and I have I have uh, one fella. He's interested in this guy, and I got another cock, young cock. But she, she looks like a little crow. She looks like a little crow. I think we should call her Snow White. But as you can see, the development here, they're still like, do you see how wet they are still? Yeah. Wet they're under, wet eating under like good, yeah. Like they're just and now, what's her name here? She's, <laughs> just hold on. Okay, she is roughly the same age as these two, but take a look. <laughs> Put them together. Holy mackerel! Take a look at this. Yeah, look at the size of her. Yeah. Same age, different breed, but look, different same breed. Age. Well, what she's as healthy as, as can be, yeah. She's she's as cute as can be, that one. She's Fannie Mae. Oh, yeah, she's real nice. Let's okay, we have, we, we have questions here, so I'm going to get to the questions. Neil says, will... Oh, sorry, now I got dinner. Dog's barking for dinner. 
Uh, Neil's asking, will and can hens develop sauerkraut at 18 days of age if they are sitting on artificial eggs, producing milk, but not having babies to feed? Can, can a hen sitting on, on eggs, 18 days, dummy eggs, can the hen produce sour, sauerkraut or sour milk? Can hens develop sauerkraut? <laughs> If sour crop. I don't. Sour know. Crop, I, I believe. I believe if you got them on dummy eggs, and uh, it's time to hatch, and they have to pump the milk, I don't think that's good for them. It's not good. Well, you got to get rid of that milk. Sure. Not Neil. Guido says Neil. Milk production gets activated by the movement inside the egg and yeah, pipping. Pipping. I'm not sure if I said that chipping. right. So chipping. So, chipping. Chip. Okay. So he says no. I, I would think I would think not either. I, I don't. Uh, I, Mother Nature is too swift to make that mistake. Because how many times did you do hens, even in the wild, their eggs are maybe ready to hatch or not even ready to hatch, and then the eggs, the cr crow comes and take the eggs or something. I don't. I don't think. Okay, that would wait, be. I'm just trying to think of that. I, I think like what Guido's saying. I think once those eggs are, are hatching, there's something already within the hen that she starts to produce, and as the babies start to take the milk, then she kicks in to really start producing the milk. That's what I think. I don't know. If but I mean, have... who is any of us uh, going to ever know I, this? I, I'm just trying to think here. The well, while, where... while, while you're thinking, um, Owen wants to know what do the powders look like as adults? Oh, did you, didn't you see uh, Rusty last year, Owen? Yeah, you're gonna. You just have to wait until you see. They're 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 very uh, sexually uh, aggressive. Um, the cocks are super. I've got two hens that actually you think they were cocks. Yeah. Like and, you, and they're mating up to me. And, it's and, unbelievable. And, and Owen, you're an internet kind of guy. Just type in thief powder videos, and you're going to see it right there. Oh, there. Uh, that's that's the best way to watch it. I got one. I got those okay. two hands out okay. there. We, they're just like, oh god! Right. I just go and talk to them. Boy, they're just like all over me. They'll follow me across the field. They're quite little characters. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. They are. And, and the and cox. I, you put the cocks out there, uh, you can have your cock, uh, a powder cock out with a, a bunch of young birds, and the hens are starting to mature. And he'll come up there, he's like a guy with a, with a real nice suit on, and he has a sports car, and he's going up to these hens, and he's talking to them, and the hens are nodding to him. The next thing, the hen squats down. Okay. And you know what so, he does? He walks away and just goes to look at another hen. Like these guys think they're like Mr. Casanova. I don't care. I don't need you. I can, you know, they're really, really something to watch. And you guys will see them on this year with mm -hmm. our Pioneer Racing because we do use them as not a dropper, but a herder to herd the birds into the hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And originally these powders, uh, there's places in uh, Holland, uh, Scotland, England, where they have competitions where they take these cockbirds and they actually train. Uh, so they say, okay, okay so uh, let's say Jim lives five miles down the road and there's a competition. So they take the cock and they, they take them to Jim's place. They let them go. The cock comes back to their place. And then they do that a few times, could be five, uh, ten, five kilometers, eight kilometers, or whatever you call it. And then they'll let that cock out. They just, they just have, they, they and do the cock will fly to the guy's place Dad, and try and can, scoop can, birds. Can, can, have you been in a competition and flown one yet? I've seen it. You've seen it. Oh, I've, seen I've never it. seen it. I didn't even know that. No, I have seen it. Okay, that's good. Right. I know. I <laughs> talked to uh, uh, professional uh, powder uh, guys, powder fellow. Okay. Um, what was it? Uh, what's his name again? I can't remember it, it, now. But it, he they're, he they're, told he he's told right. me, and I they're, see how these birds work. They're great. Can, they're they're great herders. Yeah. They're characters. We we recommend everybody has one because they're just a lot of fun. Owen's asking, yeah. do you like the races that fly over the ocean? Lots of birds don't make it. I personally think it's don't agree with it. The ones where they let them out in the middle of the ocean on a boat, but that's just me. Ryan, Richard, what do you think? 
Go ahead, Ricky. Uh, I think it's I think it's tough. Um, okay, on one side of me says I don't like it. On the other side of me says it's competition. Right. Like, like take a look at the guys that fly in Ireland. Ireland. The birds got to fly if they're flying from France. They got to they got to fly through Belgium. It's not a, a wide country, but then they got to hit that North Sea, right? To fly across to England, mm -hmm. those Irish birds, which is about 30 miles. Mm -hmm. Then they fly up. Mm -hmm. Then they got to cross the Irish Sea, mm -hmm. which is about 230 miles to get to Ireland. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. Real tough. Nobody. It, and, it and, he, tough. and here, and here, and here, uh, it's so cute how we are here, right? Eh? Here, we're worrying about puddles. <laughs> worrying about puddles here. Well, you talk we're to. We're puddle jumpers. I, I think the man's <laughs> name was uh, Derek Walsh, mm -hmm. the Irish fellow. Yep. He would look at uh, Lake Ontario here, which crossing yeah, he, uh, right here, he told, uh, he told 30 me. miles he to told go to me. Niagara. You know what he said to me? It's a joke. No, he didn't. He said, oh, you guys have puddle racing. Puddle. Puddle racing. But you know what, eh? Ready? Watch this. Oh, 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 oh. There's a little bit of water there. You know what at least is good here with our puddles? They're drinkable. We got drinkable puddles. We have drinkable. You tried drinking, drinkable you tried drinking salt water. I, I know I was in Mexico on a vacation. I was drinking salt water. I was sick after about one sip. Uh, Neil oh, says that uh, Fancier was here today. He never separates his birds, only breeds one round. The following rounds in the summer, he removes the babies early to prevent sauerkraut. In the fall, all nesting material is removed. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about the sauerkraut part. So, I no, think. No, wait. That's... So he removes. I don't. I, I don't. I don't understand what the point well, is. And Michael Peebler on YouTube makes a good point to say that mm -hmm. some countries have no choice but to fly over water, or they may not even have a pigeon sport. They adapt, right. right? They you, you you figure out you figure out a way. That the Irish have done it. The who else? That the English don't they do it too? There's a whole bunch of them that oh, do it. Sure. Hey, hey, listen. If you're if you're in uh, Kuwait, you're flying over the desert. That's that's a, that's another body of water, right? Well, we flew in San Diego, and the last race, they fly 200 miles over desert, desert. And the one guy, uh, one guy f uh, told me that the wind in the desert picks up, and the sand that goes up becomes uh, worse. Then a snow whiteout. Right. The pigeons fly through blistering sand. So everywhere is different, and and it what's it, it's wherever you are. If I mean, hey, if we lived up in the North Pole because we're mm -hmm. pigeon flyers, we'd probably have pigeons up there. Mm -hmm. And if I lived there and you there, we'd be probably winter racing through the snow. Right. Yeah, it, uh, it's no. it, it's 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 tough, and you got to condition your birds and not remember those birds flying over that water. Uh, you know, I've been to Belgium, and the, the waves come up, and the birds are flying. I've seen it. They're flying about two and a half feet above the water, and they're heading home, right across, and then the waves come up. A four-foot wave comes up. The birds fly into that water, and they're done, right? Right. You know, I, I spoke with... Uh, uh, his name was Robert Mahan. This was quite some time ago, probably 40 years ago. Uh, he was in Trinidad. He said they only, uh, the island's so small that it's, it's worthless to train across the island because it's only like 15 miles across. So they, what they would do is, uh, he says, most of the people, they live right by the ocean. They, they live on the ocean. They had a boat. And he said we would take our pigeons out uh, 30 miles out into the ocean and let them go because that's the only way to go. Right. They couldn't go by car that way because it's maybe only 10 or 15 miles. But, and he told me, he said they seen pigeons coming home and the seagull, he said, is the king of the ocean. 
Right. And he said, you got a kid of 30 birds flying home across the, the ocean water. The seagulls see them, and they just pick them off. They dive bomb, and they, they, they put them into the water. Into the water, and they eat them. And, you know, getting back to this, Leah, and we, we talked about it this week. We're going to sort of switch gears because we're in story time mode. Okay, wait. One second, please. Can you please keep your tail up or you're not going to go to the show this weekend? Okay, keep good. her tail. <laughs> she's working on that. And she's loving the stories, Ricky. And you're on story time heaven. What's great about this is we were talking about building a race course for these pioneer bands. Okay. And it's tricky. It's really tricky. Because we have, for the longest time in this area, we have become... What I call suckles. Yeah. And that's a harsh fuck bang. That's a kick right in the nuts. Oh, suckles. Yeah. Reason being, we pick one course and we've stuck to it. We brainwashed ourselves that these pigeons can only do this. And talking through the week and trying to build a course, it's going to be fun because we want these bands going to go on sale in July here, July 1st. We want to have a rough idea of how the course is going to look. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to throw this question at you before you go on. And some people are going to want July 4th, and then some people are going to go, oh, well, I separate the birds. I'm not going to. So these bands will go on when? Well, not you, not this you, year. You can start buying them as early as July. July. and, and They're we, for the 2022 20, season. 22 season. 2022. The next season that's coming 21, in. 21, 22. We're, right. We're in 21 right now. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know. Gonna... I don't know if he knows what year he's in, but we're in 2021. Yeah. These bands you just are said... for 2022. I clearly said that. 2022. Okay. 2022. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you can start banning these after Happy New Year's. New Year's. You're going to go through a New Year's party. Mm -hmm. You start banning these. Okay. Now, look how nice she's holding her tail up. She's beautiful. She's going to go to the show. <laughs> um, like Neil says, that his birds every day fly over water mm -hmm. because... He lives on Mask Island. He lives on an island. ABC Loft over on YouTube says that he thinks the birds adapt to their environments, but the ocean is deadly. Yes, absolutely. Ocean, the ocean is deadly. And I think you're absolutely right. The pigeons will adapt. Is it, The pigeons will adapt. It's the people that have the hard time. <laughs> well, yeah. And this is what we're getting back to. Designing a course for this, I've looked at it. I've looked at the participation and where we want our participation from as far from from down in the Tilsonburg area to the Toronto area to out east there, maybe Kingston or, or, or Colberg in that area. And you, you look at designing a course, she's pretty tough. So we're going to, Leah, we're going to really push these breeders that are going to participate to get a little bit more outside that box, go a little bit further outside that box. But you know what the problem we're going to have here is? They've put themselves in a box for the last 30 years. Now we got to train an old dog to do a new trick. Now, I do want to give a, a special thank you to Mike Vandriak, who had done his research this week and sent us two release points um, that he mm -hmm. feels is in the best interest of everybody in the greater Toronto and surrounding area. And I want to really thank Mike for, for putting the time in to do that, because you know what? It helps us. We're, we're only two people, three people. You know, it's tough, right? How do we make it fair to everybody? How do we give everybody an advantage, a disadvantage, where it's all fair and equal playing field? Right. And, and the more we kept saying, well, we want to make it fair for everyone. We want to make it fair for everyone. Actually, this is what we came up with. <laughs> it's the greatest idea I've ever come up with. Why make it fair for everyone? We don't want to make it fair for anyone. If it's not fair for anyone, then we're all in the same bag, right? You can't make it fair for everyone. I know. I looked at what Mike picked out. Looked pretty good. Still not fair for everyone. So I think the best thing no, when but we I design think this course is to do this. One of his picks, Bissett, Bissett Creek, was one of his um, suggestions. And we, mm -hmm. did, we worked that one in to, we said, okay, that's a good yeah. spot. Um, That's I mean, right. I, I can name some some locations. I, I don't know how we want to do this. Well, I've thought about this, and I don't think I ever want to nail a course down in stone because these bands 
they're going to have a hard time selling. I think what we need to have is about 25 locations. And I think we sort of need to do a weekly draw of where we're going. So let's say on a Sunday night family show, we draw for this week's race point. We will give you all the race points that could possibly be. And I started putting things together, Leah. We talked about it, and Mike, Mike had some good suggestions. And people, you're always welcome to give your suggestions. The more we have, the more we have to work with. And don't take it personally if we don't pick your location. But Leah, I, I've got them here, and I sort of did the, 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 the mileage from sort of Tilsonburg to, let's say, Colburg, Toronto, in that area. So this kind of a spread like this, right? Yeah. So you looked at, we could say, Bissick Creek. Well, for basically the guys in the Toronto area to the guys out in Tilsonburg, Colburg, you're anywhere from, uh, you know, 160 miles to 260 miles. So some guys could be flying 120 miles. Some guys could be flying 260 miles. That's a lot. That's a big difference. But that's on one week, right? One week, somebody's real short. But then you could go like this and go, hmm, maybe we'll go to Tobamori. So, look, so, she's, she's getting I ready for the show. She's getting, she's in the show. You could look yeah. at Tobamori, for instance. Right. Well, now the guys that were flying 100 or 260 miles, they'd only be flying about 150 miles. And the other guys would be up to 200, 225 miles. Okay. So, so my, you my, start question, to, my question for you is, mm -hmm. you're going to start flying young birds. Mm -hmm. Okay. The man that flies, or woman that flies 120 miles mm -hmm. on this week. Mm -hmm. But somebody else over here has to fly 220 mm -hmm. miles. Mm -hmm. That's way too much for well, a young bird to jump into. Well, okay. okay. So, so, so right. I, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, that's way too much. I, and I was thinking, you know, if, <clears throat> if you're looking to put your birds on here, this is a, a this is a sportsman club. This is a club mm -hmm. where you got different prize points. And I, I recommend, and I'm only recommending, guys, when you're training your birds, get your birds out couple times, 60, 80, 100 miles, get them winged out a little bit to give yourself a little bit of movement here and educate your birds. If we do a more of around the clock, and like I'm saying, Asarnia, Ottawa, Valdor, Mattawa, Owen Sound, West Guilford, Am Amherstburg, okay? You go look at all these spots and it's a big, it's big, okay? A large U. A, a large, a large U. What this does is, if you're living in Tilsonburg and you work in Toronto, you can get your birds out that way. You can get your birds out this way. You can get your birds moving more around the clock like they do out in Calgary. This is a money club, right? This is a club where we're getting into real flying. So I would, if it's me, and I look at this course and see what way I could be on how the balls are drawn, I'm going to make sure my birds, before the first race, they are well seasoned where they can take 160 to 200 mile first race. Because this week you may be at 200 miles, next week you drop down to 125, the week after that you might move up to 150, you could go to 280, there's adjustments. What's the perfect course? There's none. There is, no per yeah. there is no perfect course when you're dealing with such a large area where you're trying to include as many lofts as possible. Mike Vanderyak says, the first young bird race when I flew with the EOC was 200 miles. We all thought that was normal. No one told the birds it was too far. They did fine. Exactly. Well, there you go. I think what Mike's saying is, uh, what he's saying, he's not bragging. He's saying if the birds are in good condition right that right. they will do they, they there's and, no and, problem and, yeah and, they, they got to be and, in good condition and and guys that being a pigeon racing pigeon flyer you got to get those birds in good condition and uh you just can't go like a week before two weeks before and say i just started well, training you know i, I just I would, started right, off okay. flying. right i would certainly yeah. hope if people are going to invest any kind of money whether it's in our band race or you're flying in a regular combine, if you're going to invest the time, money, effort, you know, you'd want, I would think that you'd want to prepare your birds. That kind of makes common sense. And if you're not preparing your birds, I don't know why you're even doing it. But. Well, it's not right to the birds, number one. 
No, it's right. right. And, and we. And we can't be here to babysit everybody. And that this isn't our job but either. We're here to educate people, right? And tell and, them and, that you, you know, uh, please, you don't just take yeah. the hound dog out um, a week before and then expect him to go hunt rabbits per, really you know, good you know, next it, week. It was like it was like, it was like, like uh, Rick Martis said. I like Rick Martis down mm -hmm. there in Oklahoma. He said, "Ryan, you do not know your young pigeons at all. You do not know them until." You've hit them two hours on the wing. You get them where they got to do about a two-hour fly, and they yeah, and we don't mean loft flying. No, we mean take them a hundred miles. That should take them roughly two hours on the wing. They get up, they come home roughly two hours, two and a half hours. We'll put them a little bit of in a bit of a headwind. Okay. but so I'm, then you'll figure. I'm just it. I'm just saying a hundred miles gives you two hours on the wing, basically. Right. At Eighty miles an hour and forty-five minutes. A hundred. 120 miles, two, hour, uh, two hours and 30 minutes, whatever. This is just what he said. So I guess mm -hmm. our question is to everybody who is considering entering this band race for next season, would you guys prefer that we select 10 or 12 or 15 locations? We have a list of the locations. And then th the week before the race, like say, you know, we have race day on Saturday. So on Sunday of that week, we put all the names in a in the raffle bowl or a, whatever you want to call it. We we mix them all up and we pull the name, and that will be the the next week's race location. Do you want to do it that way? You guys think that's a good way to do it? Do you think a, a set course is the way to do it? What do you guys think? The, the the thing I thought about the set course is people scare themselves into saying it can't be done. It can't be done. And people people will look and go, ho, oh, ho, look at this. I got four races on my line. I'm going to go for it. Then the guys over there in the corner go, oh, I only got two races on my line. I'm not doing that. I'm going to run away. What I like about the balls in the old, and we're going to get a proper ball machine, so nobody's drawing the name. She'll just come out automatically. What I like about it is we're all betting the money. We're all playing the game. It's equal for everyone. And we can have a list of 20. 25 stations. We can have a list where the first three weeks, it's all everything under the farthest guy is going to be flying is maybe 180 miles. Guys could be flying 75 miles. So you keep all those together in a group. You do three or four of those races, and then you bring the next batch of locations in that go further out for people. Okay. So Troy says vote for the course. Owen says vote. Um, Troy says when you vote for the course, that's what everybody wants. And over on YouTube, um, Antonio says, stick to the one loft races. <laughs> That's the only way it's fair for everyone. Well, I, I think mm, I... Yeah, yeah I, I can't find a one loft race here I can fly. I'm sleeping. Well, the Pioneer uh, one loft. It's oh, a good, good one loft. Uh, it's good. Yeah, well, that's because we fly them. Right. Right. That's right. We fly the birds. Right? Okay, We're not so making perch fees here. Neil says they, that you need a schedule for training and planning. He suggests five east races and five west races. Uh, Henry says that he'd like to, if we picked the location the week before. So I don't know. Maybe we'll have to put a poll up. I don't know. Uh, I, I think east, a little bit east, a little bit uh, west, and a little bit well, in the middle. In well, the middle. If you guys... Right? right. So that way... Everybody gets kind of a chance on this. Well, remember, don't try and make it fair for anyone because I've already looked at this, mm -hmm. and you will not make it fair for everyone. You won't make it fair for any of them. No. And this is this is the point where I get to. I looked at this. I, I just scratched my head. One guy, one's flying 160. The other guy's flying 290. You know. Really? And then you know what? I'm picking people like guys out in Tilsonburg, out in Colburg, down in Toronto. The other thing is, are we getting people that are voting and not participating? Well, that's, that's another, another thing. thing. You know, Mandy says a set course might be too much of an advantage or disadvantage to some racers. A draw may be a more more interesting and exciting. And that's where mm. Ryan and I thought that drawing it the week before, it's not like you guys aren't going to know where we're going. We're going to we're going to tell you the locations, but you're not going to know until the week before where you're going to go that week. So we just mm. thought it would be fun. It would be exciting. It would be interesting. And if we give you the list of, let's say we have picked 25 locations, 
okay? We give you the whole list of them. So that you're gonna see where you're flying 65 miles and you're gonna see where you're flying 390 miles. You look at your map list and you say, okay, I'm gonna start the races. I don't know where they're going. So we're gonna take these birds on a magical course. And we're gonna train them out and get them smart and get them thinking, but nobody knows. Even the Pioneer one lot birds, I don't know. We're gonna drop that ball in and punch it out. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If I got my birds loft flying properly, uh, once or twice a day for let's say an hour, an hour and 20 minutes, and I've got them trained out to, uh, I go 80 miles okay. or 130 kilometers, whatever uh, people are thinking, my birds are going to look like steel. And if I got to put those birds to 200 miles, I know they'll okay. do it. They know they'll well, do and, it. And, and, that's and this is what Omar uh, Martinez, thanks for joining us, Omar. I haven't seen you on. Um, he says, guys, birds don't know about distance. If they are good and healthy, they will come home. Yeah. If they're in good shape and they're muscled up, properly they'll be there and i think at the end of the day if if we're doing this sort of east west north having multiple locations people don't know i just think it's going to make better flyers out of all of us and 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 better birds and i just think it's going to make it better for everybody yeah and, and what we're doing is if we give you a set location i promise the people that said they're going to come in as soon as they see that location doesn't fare them they won't come in but if we're drawing the week before everybody you have six days to get your birds set up for that race point everyone's in the same boat same boat now uh, again okay, though okay, so, again so, though so, so this is something. completely I, I, it takes mm -hmm. I would say about six weeks mm -hmm. prior to any racing mm -hmm. to get your birds right. muscled up, okay. mentally ready. Okay. Don't don't just look at okay. uh, what you're going to spin the wheel and say, "Oh, hold on. Uh, they're not hold, ready." Hold no. on, they better hold be ready. On. When you hold start on. spinning could the wheel, they got to be could ready. Could you just stop? Yeah. The week before the first race, mm -hmm. if these people want to spend their money on bands mm -hmm. and go only north. And go like this, and go to 15 miles. Okay. Yeah. I don't give a shit. They don't have to fly. Listen, it. I'm not here, Richard, to play. Come on, Timmy. You can do it. No. Get your birds ready to go to battle. You're going to fly nine weeks of maybe around the course racing. And you're flying for money. And guess what? Take your crying towels and leave them at home because we're all going to be in the same boat together. Uh, okay, You're let right. me get to the comments because we've got lots of them here now. We've uh, started a, a firework here. So let's see, see, I told you I would get her going, Leah. That's good. Okay, we're going to go over to YouTube first. And let's see here. Antonio says, it's not just the distance you have to consider. It's the wind direction too. ABC Loft says, is it true that a one loft race is the only way you can tell the best quality birds and bloodline? I'm going to no. vote no on that one. A hard, hard no. no. That's a hard no. Very hard no. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I I seen one loft races and uh, they don't hey, they hey, don't train hey. them. They get out to hold, one one race. Hold on, hold on. In in North America, there's a man, a mighty man. Mm -hmm. He has the best one loft birds that money can buy. He's bought every winner from here to there, around and around and around. He's got over two million bucks in those birds. And all I keep seeing is striking out, striking out with the biggest one loft winning birds that money can buy. You want to know what you need? You need some luck. Well, and you need on, good a, on a side note to that, as I'm sure most of you know, we do a lot of auctions for European breeders, breeders that come from Belgium, Germany, Holland, etc. How many of them fly in one loft races, Ryan? Percentage wise. Oh, very not not many of them and the ones that do all they say is oh i go to spain for the weekend i see all my pigeon friends from all over we have a good party some good drinks some good food hey if i'm really lucky i might make a couple dollars right would, you, my, would you judge your breeding program on it you know what they right. say judge my breeding program on that you gotta be nuts and and my point of this is it's funny because a lot of people here in north america buy birds from these European fanciers who don't participate in one loft races at all. So what does that go to tell you about one loft birds and just 
combine birds or race birds. If one loft birds were where it was at, then why do so many North Americans buy birds off of Europeans who don't fly in one loft races? I don't know. It, it's a myth to me. That I, doesn't listen, make sense to me. I, I had a guy message us. It was nice. He wants to do an auction like uh, all of a sudden I've done something, right? He flew one one loft race. One race, 1,600 fast. Next race, 1,700 meters, meters per meter. fast. Just blo blowing home. Some, some people may not 1,600 meters, meters, 1,600 yards fast. So that's traveling meters yeah, per minute. It meter. basically was the one loft guy. Guess what? Oh, it's gonna win. It's gonna be behind them. Take him. I gotta get him home. Four four races. Three of them were super fast. The fourth one, they flew thirteen hundred yards. Still an easy day per minute. Per minute. He only got quarter of the birds home. The guy's going on like this is the best thing. Yeah, you won seven seven grand, ten grand. Great, great, great. It's still nothing. We haven't done nothing yet. We haven't done oh. nothing yet. We're, we're putting this one loft thing on some pedestal like it's a great. Hey, I won the Hoosier. You won what? What did you win? Huh? The, the pyramid thing. Yeah. The, the pyramid race. You might as well put a bunch of balls. Yeah. Uh, bingo balls put, into a hold drum. Hold on. You know Pigeon Bingo? Yeah. It's more fun. At least you can see from start to finish you lose. Um. Antonio wants to know the comment on the wind direction. So his remark on the wind direction was, well, I'm just going to reread it because I jumped here, um, says it's not just the distance you have to consider. It's the wind direction, too. So let's That's talk right. about the wind direction. And then I got a bunch of what, comments what's on the, Facebook. What's, oh. what's the old saying is you have to allow, what is it, what your competition uh, will allow, uh, will allow you, 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 you. Okay. So okay. you can't. Okay. You, okay. You, you, if the wind is hard out of the west, and you're way in the west, the guys in the east, uh, they're going to have an advantage. But but right. when you're drawing out of a ball, hey guys, when the pigeons, you know, uh, here we're going to let the birds out. You let the birds out. Yeah. The other day we had that hurricane wind here. Yeah. The birds were still circling and flying in the wind, weren't they? Did they fly or did they land? You were flying. Okay, good. Would you have trained your birds that day? If if you I had, do. Young, yeah, do, you yeah. do. Uh, if you train them to be suck holes, they won't fly in the wind. They won't fly in a crosswind. But they won't fly in a headwind. Antonio had a good point. When the wind's forty kilometers or, or 30, 40 miles an hour out of the west, mm -hmm. the guys in the east right. are gonna have an advantage. And the next week, when you go to the east or to the west, and the wind's the opposite way, they're the in the advantage, disadvantage. It goes and, close, right? And that's what's great about it. Who knows? Who's I can't predict Mother Nature. So what you're saying is, when you do the thing, we right. pick the, the that's spot. Right. We're all in the same boat. Okay, let me get... same boat. Okay, hopefully Antonio... <laughs> Good question, that, Antonio. <laughs> that addresses the wind question that you had. Good news from Tracy Norway Lions. She says, My husband and I spent yesterday at the Wings of Stone Loft. He is now considering letting me have a loft. Congratulations, oh. Tracy, and oh. your husband. I'm not sure what his name is, but he's A-OK -okay in my books. That is awesome. Well done. Good. Good. I mean, this is what we're doing. So those, we're, we're, we're growing the sport. Swoop Loop's helping out. Everyone's good. Yeah. Good and job. A, big, a bunch of thumbs up, hearts, wow faces. Well done to Tracy and her husband. That is awesome. Okay, so Michael Pimentel says that he agrees with when Ryan says draw a set of two different distance and courses more surprising and exciting. Uh, let's see here. Omar says also make two teams, one for long and one for middle. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Let's see here. You can, what you else? can do that. Uh, as far as the one loft winners versus uh, just... Combine winners, Mike Vandriak says, with few exceptions, big one loft winners are bred out of combine winning bloodlines. And I think that was kind of Ryan and my point. Um, yeah. Troy Spencer says, these so called three or four races is a joke. Well, you know where we stand I, on I that. Agree with, Troy, I, I agree, agree on that. We agree. We all agree with that. Well, the three of us do. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we have here um neil says that he disagrees uh and he states uh my gayness which i believe that's who ryan was referring to before 
Uh, Guido Madrusen says because they think if they buy the names and spend lots of money, they will breed nothing but winners. Winning families are developed by selective breeding, not by random crossing. Well, you know, to get back, Neil disagrees with that comment. You were there with me in Indiana. Yeah. We went out for dinner with Miguel. My Gannis. Mm -hmm. I said to him straight across the table on the wall. He had all the first National Ace Pigeons that he had bought. And I said, Mike, here's my question. How good were the first National Ace Pigeons you bought? I said, and he said, well, what do you mean how good were they? I said, how many of them bred you Super Pigeons? He said, Ryan, I bought 47 or 45. You were sitting there. We were eating. We were eating at the steakhouse. You mm -hmm. remember? He let a hug that night from Debbie. And he said, Ryan... I only had two I ever bought that never bred me anything. All the rest bred me super pigeons. Okay? Now, we just look. We're going to pick one pigeon right now. A pigeon I handled, Mix. One South Africa. I was the youngest pigeon to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Has it bred a winner yet? Oh, 60, 70,000 bucks. None of those first national aces were ever sold at that amount at that time. The pigeons that win on those European courses flying against 10,000 pigeons, 20,000 pigeons, 50,000 pigeons in big national races, do you know the quality of pigeon men that they're flying against? The quality of a pigeon man that sets up the cockbird to dominate, sets up the hen to dominate. Those pigeons are so rare. They're like golden nuggets. No one lost pigeon. South African million dollar race. Did they ever have a real race? They flew short races, tailwind races. On, on the last race, they don't care. Dump them down the road. It's a joke. Because what is it? It's the pyramid to make the money. That's what it is. It's not real racing. It's pyramid racing. It's pyramid racing. Get your heads around it. Read the forest through the trees. Forest for the trees. However you want to say it. It's bullshit. Antonio says that the wind usually goes in the same direction, and he disagrees with us about the one-loft races, and that's okay. We're having a friendly debate here. We're having yeah. a conversation. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong, and that's the beauty about this channel and this page and mm -hmm. the Pioneer, that we can agree to disagree, and it's okay. I'm going to get back to the comments here. And, Go ahead, Ryan. And, and you know, I, I uh, Antonio, I... I as strongly as I'm against one-loft races, I love the races in California. John Timberman, Steve Miner. I could send birds there every year. They give a good race. It's a tough course, and I believe in what they're doing. I believe in what they're doing. And they've run it long enough. People, Different people are winning, and it's good. I like that. I think John Timberman and uh, Ahmad from the, uh, the, the San Diego Classic there, I think any race anywhere in the world would be a brilliant to go and pay them whatever they wanted to be a handler, a loft manager. They're fantastic. That's my feeling on it. Not all of them are bad. Lots, there's good ones, but very few. So why, uh, if I can ask you mm -hmm. uh, as a uh, kind of an outsider, uh, why would you feel these two fellows are uh, superior to a lot of, uh, against the uh, other one loft races. And and some people are going to say, well, exactly what you just, uh, you're preaching. So explain why you think uh, these people are superior for John, what? John, From start to finish. That's what I want to say. John, John Timmerman himself, uh -huh. he's an artist with handling 1,000, 1,500 pigeons. He's an artist. He does it. He gives them the work. He flies on not, not the easiest course of all. So to start off, he, he's, he's a great pigeon keeper. He's, 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 he's got the niche down, and he does it perfect. As a pigeon keeper. Pigeon keeper. And gets, gets them all on the, yes. the, up to that certain stage. Yes. And, where yes. we're going to start law flying yes. and training. Yes. And you say he's mastered it from start yes to middle yes to the end to, to finish to the end and right. he has a tough course it's a fair course and i think he does a very good job uh, and same with Ahmad and steve minor at the, at the holiday cup there the san diego classic i think it's the same way they have been doing it 
for so long and they have a, a how they do it <clears throat> I, I love it Moving whereas on, other yeah. races oh, they, sorry, you know so we're going to get into one uh, into go, the one go ahead, thing, Leah. but i'm saying other other races uh they don't uh first of all uh, they may not be pigeon keepers and then uh, when they move they don't do things they hold them back and then they uh, they push them at the end and it's just okay Mo moving along you guys are having some buffering issues with your camera so just don't move a lot and stare at the camera for a minute so it catches up brian mansker is says i have clipped the ninth and tenth feather and in 14 days i will pull them what should the training look like during this period well, well when when you know it's funny you say that i i was uh one time i have to take birds down what will it look like you mean so he's just done this yeah, so he's, gonna he's gonna pull talk, the flight the law flying the law flying right. the, the birds Let's will the birds will fly but they're going to be heavy and <sighs> what's going on sorry we're just having some k you guys are can like you hear really, me yeah we can hear you but you're just really slow motion oh um the birds are going to sound noisy when they fly they're not going to stay up they're not going to want to stay up long with the ninth and tenths gone uh we i was one time there we took birds to tom shillings and he pulled the ninth and tenth on all of his young birds and he had them out for a law fly so amazing you take those four flights off those pigeons the pigeons are noisy when they fly they gotta they gotta work 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 harder and they don't law fly the same way uh but that's what it's gonna let them come in right you get them up they may go for a five minute 10 minute 15 minute fly uh tom would take his birds down the road a half a mile and let them go just to get them up and going because he really they're missing the tools right you're taking the tools away from them it's like training pigeons when they got no feathers uh guido madrusen said it's all about it just, luck. Uh, it's hard uh, it, can you hear me okay are you hearing me all right because your camera is just going wonky yeah, if, if anything we we hear we hear you fine all right um, I hear the point. Maybe I'm just going to put Fanny on for a minute while the other camera catches up. So just move the camera so we can all take a look at Fanny. There she is. How cute is she? Guido says okay. it's all about luck. She's got to get her tail up. There she is. She, she does. Guido says it's all about luck. It's a crapshoot. Our typical responses from fanciers that don't do well in one loft races. Uh, Neil says, yes, three or four generations back in the pedigree. Ooh, I'm reading somebody else's comment. You're talking to somebody else. Let's see what else here. Uh, Swoop Loop <clears throat> says, we have not pulled the ninth and tenth. How much of a disadvantage are we at? S Swoop, Loop, Swoop, Swoop Loop, where you're flying, I would be flying the darkening system, and I wouldn't even mess with the ninth and tenth at all. So the ninth and tenth is when you're trying to push them through the molt. The darkening is when you're holding it. If he's got them on the lights, right? Well, if he's got them on the lights, then yeah, you cut the ninth to, and tenth. Yeah, you, you cut the tip, cut the tip off about that much, cut them both off, and then in three, four days, cut them one more time a little bit, give them about a week, and out they come. ABC so lost the on feather. sorry, ABC lost on YouTube says they say the birds all eat the same train the same so is a more fair judgment on the quality of the bird i believe he's talking in relation to one loft races um yeah, yeah i agree they eat the same they train the same you know they're all in the same know, boat you know what i would love it if a one loft you know what there's only one guy i know that would have the balls to do this and this would be you i would do it too i'd like to see a one loft race collect the money perch fee prize fee everything all the pigeons do are loft fly. First race is 100 miles. That's it. That's it. Started oh, off. Look at, look at her stretching her wings. She's stretching. Oh, look at her. She's ready to go. But it would be great because, you know what? Then we don't have to bitch and complain about how little training or how much he trained them on tailwinds and whatever. Just skip all the training. Take your money in and do it like that. Start at 100 miles and the next week go out to 150. The next week go out to 200. Right. Then 225 to 300. Yeah, that, then 250. That, that system there, I would just start at 25 miles. The first race. 
Yeah, first race, 25 miles. We could do that too. With no, no training, just law flying. Just law flying. Absolutely no training. No training. I love right. it. But if you have a thousand birds, they don't law fly. You've got, it gets you've got hard. maybe, it maybe gets 150 hard. a law fly. The rest of them sit in the roof like a bunch of chickens. And ah. that's where it's hard for these guys with these birds that have a thousand birds to get, to, if they don't law fly, they don't train. Uh, what I'm saying is take them out in a truck 20 miles or 10 miles or five miles. They don't, they have to law fly before you can, uh, you can, and, and in Europe, they call law flying training. Yeah. They have to fly between 20 minutes and let's say an hour and a half. When you let them out from the loft, they must law fly. They call that training in Europe. If they don't law fly, they don't take them in the car five miles or eight kilometers or whatever it is on a training toss. They're not ready for it. But if you have a thousand birds, a thousand birds does not law fly properly. In a group, well, and the only way to do know, it, the only way to do it is to cut those groups down to about, I would say, 50 birds per group. Let 50 out at 5:30 in the morning in the summer. Sit there and watch them. They go out. Let them fly for 20 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes. Get them in. Get the next 50 out and do the same thing. If you let a thousand out. Uh, maybe 50 might get out there and law fly, but the well, rest of them will sit on the board. Hey, you got to remember too, Leah, I know you probably have things to say. I want you guys to look at, I'm going to use a bird as black wolf. We have a hundred birds and we have one black wolf. Every hundred is one black wolf, but really black wolf. When I look at him and I'm not knocking, it's Wolfie's bird. I believe he's just a dropper. So when you let him out, he naturally pulls the group to where? The board and think about it in your 100 birds the first 100 if you get 17 black wolves you just put 17 droppers in with your race birds and you have a thousand when we had the trifecta yeah. i would let out 800 birds mm -hmm. i'm not kidding you there was 150 pigeons on that, the board that never wanted to lie they're fly. like dumb chickens i could you could shoot a gun at them you can put a hawk at them they you do whatever you, you know, know what they said you know what i i'm not flying no i don't want to fly I, I know exactly what you go saying. ahead leah and that's uh, yeah, another yeah. thing that maybe uh, some of you don't know that ryan did run a big one loft race big meaning where there were numbers five six seven eight i don't know a thousand birds he did that for a few years he didn't let never you know, again that's, Never again. That's you cannot properly care for that amount of birds. I just don't think it's possible. I don't think they're cared for properly, and I don't agree with it. If I have if I have sixty young birds, and I let them out, and I watch them, when there's two or three of them, always the same two or three. They're not flying. They just sit on the board or sit on the roof. You can clap your hands, throw the basketball, wave the flag. They won't fly. Okay. Or they fly and they land over in the hydro wires over there or whatever. You watch. Uh, I'm sorry, but they're, they're no we have to eliminate them. You eliminate them from the flock. And it's the same in this one long thing. And that's why we got out of. The big, big, big numbers. I just uh, we don't want to get into that. Uh, large numbers. I had birds last year. My young birds. They wouldn't fly. Uh, the rest of them went flying. They went from the loft right to the house roof. In two seconds, they were back on the loft. Like I called them in. The yeah. rest of them were out flying. I just made a little note. Yeah, done, that done, checker, done. that pie. That's, that's it. it. You come off. The I team. don't care what it was out of. Out. Done. Antonio says, just flag them. ABC Loft on YouTube says, why do the birds do that? Why don't they fly? Hey, you want to know what? Take a, take, let's, take a, let's take a note of this. Hey, guys. Hold on. Guys, just you know, wait. You know, just, wait, you know, just, wait, you know just, Wayne Gretzky? Hold on. Just you know, wait. Yeah, wait a minute. I got myself and my brother. Yeah. I, we grew up. We we're one year apart. I got up. Grew up. I went to work. I worked. Every day, 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. My brother, he stayed on the couch. 
He didn't get up. Didn't go to work. He didn't go to work. You know what? I could whip him. I could do the flag on him. Do whatever I want. He had it in his mind. He thought it what was you, a lot you, easier. Uh, not to, he could get fed without going to work. So he didn't go to work. Right. So that's what you, I'm you, saying. You take you take all these professional athletes. How many of them produce themselves? They don't. So you know, you know, no, it, it's it is right. it's brothers and sisters. It's brothers and sisters. Leah, you're a hard worker, and I'm a hard worker. That's pretty rare, right? Two hard workers in a row. If we would have had a third one, if you would have had a third one, we'd probably been a coach. <clears throat> they're all they're all they're all in the same loft. You're healthy. You're all in good shape, but you decide you're not going to go fly with the group. Well, you're going to you sit know, on the board you, you, or sit well, somewhere else or come well, in well, like. Well, uh, Look at Black Wolf. Watch him today in the video in the Avery. He's as tough as steel, eh? Mm -hmm. Do you know what they do to him in the Avery? Mm -hmm. He just beat on him. They they picked him out. Mm -hmm. They're gonna punish him into the ground. Do you know what he can do? He got no nest. He got no firepower to come back. Now look at her. She's gonna go to the show. Come on, get your tail up. Get ready there the she show. is. <laughs> in the show. We're, Dominic, uh, we told you. You gave him the calls. He's gonna take a call and make it into a super. <laughs> Fanny May. Fanny May. Uh, go ahead. Neil says, are we going to do another show on possible Pioneer release stations? The one loft race could be a long and separate show. We can dedicate an entire show to release locations. Sure we can, but we just don't want to be talking round and round in circles, right? Uh, we want to pick locations, find locations, get it set in stone, and then carry on. Because literally, we can talk about this all summer long. Because somebody's going to say, well, that's not fair, and that's not fair. So... Yes, we can do a show dedicated to release locations. Get your suggestions on paper, get them ready to go, and we will do a show dedicated hey, to that. Hey, and do me a favor. When you pick a location, take a look at this. Think of Tilsonburg. Think of, you know, Port Hope, Colburg. Think of those locations. Think of the Toronto, northern Toronto area. Think about what you're picking. And you know what? Don't make it fair for you when you pick the location. Pick a location for somebody else. And everyone picks these locations. And then we do the draw. Because I don't, I'm going to tell you, I'm not really interested in picking a set course. I just think it's going to be, you're not going to sell a lot of bands when you have that set course. I think everyone's going to say, like I've said it 15 times now, oh, they're all set up for Neil's course. Neil's got more chances to win. Tony's got more chances to win. Guido's got more chances to okay, win. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is, uh, take a guy like uh, me. Uh, no, I'm going to say, like, look, I'm not going to brag for Bill Wiemann. Right. But he's way west of here. Right. Flying in that uh, so-called uh, yeah. up north combine uh, right. unit. Right. And he's way west. Right. Right. And he has no choice. Well, no. He's further west. He does well. He does. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, let's try and make. He has. He has no favorites. But 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 we'll make it so that some people a little bit west they have a chance. Some people middle or east they I have a chance. I, I now, I, but I make sure that you have your pigeons right. in condition. Hold, hold on. That's that, the main thing. That's not our point here. What is it? Our point is, is to not make hey, wait, it. She's getting herself yeah. ready for I can't show. talk if you're going to keep talking about her. She is great. She look is Fannie Mae. And she's ready. She's getting ready. Dominic. Ready for the show. The show is going to be ending for you because this one's going to. We're going to put it in. Get a band on it. You still band her. Think about it. Really think. Take the advantage away from everyone. And it is the most fair for everyone. That's right. It's like a one lock. You all go in. When the balls go into the barrel, guess what? It's whatever the ball okay, pops so, up. So what I'm saying is, guys, get them ready <sighs> right. for You've the worst. Yes. 200 miles. It's like, I don't know if Mike said it or someone else said it, but if your birds are in condition, they'll fly 100 miles, or you can take them right to 200 miles and they'll do the same job. Get them winged. So they can do that job. Right. That's it. Perfect. Don't. I've heard okay, of. Dad, I've heard Dad, of, I've Dad, heard of my, you don't need to. You don't need to beat the dead horse. No, now. I'm just saying. I've yeah, heard okay. of guys. Let Leah go now. 
you, you go to the club, the guy, you say to the okay. fellow, oh, what, how are your birds today? You just talk to him. Oh, well, uh, first toss, I had him uh, last week on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, now he's going to, he's had him on one toss. And he's putting them into 113 that, miles. That is good. You know what we he, call those guys? You know what we call those I'm guys? Just saying guys. But you know what you call them? You know, you know what you call them? You got to have those because you know what those are? Those are your donators. Yeah. We don't want donators. We want people that have success. My friend, I am not going to. If we have 100 members, mm -hmm. I am not going to call 100 members and babysit them. Yeah, babysit them. Oh, well, then guess what? They got to tune into the show because I ain't babysitting them. But I will give you all their numbers. And you can spoon feed them. Oh, there's some, uh, wait, there's some guys that say, you know those uh, two youngsters? I put them in the race this weekend. What'd you do with them? They didn't do too much. They didn't off fly them. They didn't do too much. But, you know, they were out of a pair that from so-and-so, so-and-so, uh, that won so much. And I paid 5000 bucks for this pair of old birds. Well. And they think that... Those youngsters are just going to click. They got to work with the birds. Right. There you go. Go ahead. You know, I, I think what, uh, you know how we do motivational Monday quotes, a great quote that I came across while I was searching for them for quotes for our motivational Mondays is, uh, and I think I shared it with you, Ryan. I'm trying to find it on my phone. Um, you know about excuses and the nails. What the hell is oh, it now? Yeah. I can't find it. <sighs> You gotta be right. You gotta be ready in those key situations, Leah. <laughs> I know. I'm, I have like five million screenshots on my phone, and I'm like, where is it? Um, excuses are the nails that build a house of failure. Hundred percent. That's right. about one of the best quotes I've ever heard. And you know what? It is. It is great. You know what guys will say? I didn't train this week at all. Uh, the wind was too high. Oh, hold There's on. an excuse. I didn't train this week. There was too much cloud cover. I didn't train this week. It was too hot. And I didn't train and, this week. And, and, and the, you know the, what? And this is what we said. In our Pioneer one loft race, we start training the last week of June to the first week of July. And we train every single day. No, not the last week of June to the first week of July. No, we train the last week of June, June. or the first week of July. Oh, yeah. right? Oh, right. Okay. Right up. Yeah. We train every day. Yeah, there's going to be days when it's going to be 102 degrees. We train. We train. If it's raining, we train. When the wind goes out of the west, we train. When the wind's in the headwind and it's 100 degrees, we train. Why? I know you. If we don't train them then, when it's time to play, they will fail. I know uh, you and I have spoke. Uh, we let our young birds out, uh, for example, uh, in the morning for a law fly. And they fly for 40 minutes in the rain. Mm -hmm. uh, just steady rain. We're not talking pouring rain. No. Steady rain. Drizzle rain. Right. 30, 40 minutes. And then Ryan and I have gone, uh, we get them in. Said, well, uh, it still rains, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan, I said, well, I don't think we're going to train today uh, 25 miles. Right? Okay, speed it up. 40 Christmas. Right. Yeah. Well, Whoa. wait a minute. They flew this morning for 35, 30 minutes, 40 minutes in the rain. Why won't they train in the rain? Well, they will. 100% oh, right. Get them in the basket, up the road, 25 miles, whatever it is, kilometers, 40 kilometers, 50, 40 kilometers. Train, train them in tra the rain. Train them to succeed. Train and them to handle it. Well, that's right. Michael Peebler on YouTube says, you cannot please everyone. I think Michael Pimentel on Facebook said that as well. No, we cannot please everybody. We're just trying to kind of find a common ground, make it competitive, make it exciting, make it fun, make us all better pigeon flyers, which isn't that at the end of the day what we all want to be? Don't we want to be better flyers or do we want to just remain the same in the same rut? Uh, well, I, all I, all I see ahead. is we're in the rut. Yeah, we're, we're in the rut. We, we, I think there's been a rut for a long time. So I think we need to get out of the rut and open our minds. And we're going to become better flyers for it. Neil Gonzalez, will the guys from Montreal race from their own loft? Okay. Now, when I design the course, and this is where she really gets screwed up. 
there could be races where Montreal could be flying 50 miles, but then in one week right off the hop, they could be flying 300 miles. This is my problem. Montreal, honestly, they gave us the best support. Wouldn't you say, Leah, overall? As, I, I don't want to. Nah, you as know, an, I, as sort of a. As a, as a one little group area that I was shocked with, they just climbed on board and they want to play. And I think that's great. You know, Thunder Bay, they jumped on board great. There's nowhere to put Thunder Bay here, except that they want to send birds down to guys' lofts. There's some point here where I can't make it fair for any, you know, for those guys, these guys. And I'm setting it up for basically from Tilsonburg. To, 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 to the Big Apple, Kingston area. I'm setting it up for that. I want to include Montreal. I don't know how to do it. I looked at it. It's There's no there's no way. There's no... Uh, you can't have Montreal flying and Tilsonburg flying. It, it, one guy's going to be at 300 and one guy's going to be at 50 miles. You know, and then it, it just gets... Uh, it starts to get too hard. So I don't know what to do. I mean, again, or do you just say sell all the bands and then we'll pick the course? Well, that I, I don't know. Somebody on Facebook, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know who. I think Mike Vandriak said, you know what? Sell the bands and the rate, the course will be released after all the bands have been sold. But, you know, we're trying. I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is. Um, ABC Loft says winners train, losers complain. Michael Peebler yes. says, uh, too much greed, just enjoy your hobby, win or lose. Mo, nice to see you on. Let's see what Mo says. Mo doesn't com comment often, so let's see what Mo is up to. Mo says, I think if Ryan picks all the location, that will be the best because he's good on that. And he doesn't oh, please everyone. Cool. He will do what is best for everyone. We trust you, Ryan. Go ahead. Oh, God. Mo, um, I hate you. <laughs> Mo, don't say such a thing as that. Mo. Yeah. Mo. We don't need more, say, though, more people after us. <laughs> one thing about Mo the Cheese Guy. He is the best smelling pigeon guy I've ever met. Mo, <laughs> shouts out to you. No, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> but, okay. What did Mo say? Mo, Mo says, uh, let, 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 let me or you or us pick the location because everyone will like it. <laughs> Taser yeah. on now. Recalculate. No. You know what? We want this to be the people's combine. We want to get everybody's input, everybody's ideas, and then try and find a common ground. Like Ryan says, the best thing to do is so it's not fair for anybody. <laughs> so everybody's struggling yeah. at some point of the of the of the season, right? Yeah, and really, and guys, when you make your suggestion, hey, here, Leah, this is really good. If you make a suggestion, if you have the balls to write down a location. I want you to pick a great location for yourself. I want you to pick a middle location for yourself. And I want you to pick the complete crappiest location for yourself. Yeah, give me that's three. A, Don't that's give me a, one. Give me that's, three. That's a great idea, guys. If Girls, if you have race locations in mind and you want to offer them up, give us three. Just like Ryan said. And we will add them into the mix. And yes, we will dedicate a show to talking about release locations. Now, um, the camera is not the best right now. So I know we were going to do Tracy's. Tracy, I'm so sorry. I keep making you wait for your bachelor pick. But the camera is really buffering. And I don't Which think it's one? fair to Tracy. What? Uh, Which the, one? The one that you're looking at right now. This one? Yeah, it's buffery. Show me to log in and log out. We wanted to do Tracy's bachelor picks because she's been very patient and waiting. Uh, maybe it's fine now. I mean, I don't know. Tracy, what do you want to do? You want to do it now or do you want to do it tomorrow? It's completely up to you. Owen says, pick the locations when all the bands are sold. Um, Owen says he thinks he's going to buy a bingo square. Well done. Reminder, guys, all bingo squares, they are going for a great cause for the trailer fundraiser so we can build biggest mo most badass pigeon trailer in canada um that is our goal so we need you guys to help what do you do feathers elite pigeon auctions.com or fipa.ca buy your bingo squares so now the camera's behaving i don't know what's going on so maybe we'll do it now right and and we'll let it catch up this bingo game that we're gonna play 
Leah, you put the you put the road work into it. I built the cage. We came up with the idea. That's where it stops, eh? The rest is down to you. You guys here. When we say we're building the trailer, it's going to be a good trailer. When we say we want to advertise and wrap that trailer, we want to make it go down the road and be the, the sexiest looking trailer going down that road to advertise like a healthy pigeon kid. sport. Pigeon sport. That's what we want to do. We want to Look make it all a, your... a, yeah, a rolling billboard for our hobby and our sport. So when we do go down the road, people know exactly who we are and what we are doing. Uh, not, yeah, I've seen some of them and I don't know if they're hauling cattle or pigeons, but that's besides the point. And, and they're the ones with the most money. And you know what? They're keeping it. I don't, I guess they're going on vacation with the money. I don't know, but why does the sport die? Why does a business die? Why does a relationship die? Why? Because you stop trying, you stop promoting, you stop working, you stop giving a shit. All right, the tra the to Tracy. Oh boy, the camera's working fine now. Sorry, Tracy, I got you on the brain right now. So, if we want to do Tracy's picks, Tracy, you were a great sport about this. I saw that you shared. Wrong birds. You don't have the right birds. No, I do. I do. Dad, can you go grab the other? Where's the black check or white plate? Uh, and the other one. The uh, gay pipe. The black the black checker. And uh, the three for Tracy that we had picked. Where are they here? Ricky's going to get them. I thought they were in this crate, Leah. Before we, we go on to there's, this. There's one thing I want to say. Is Who do we got here, Leah? Oh, that's Who not yours, Tracy. Two? That is LMR's donation to the trailer fundraiser auction, which we will be running in a few weeks. And you will have the opportunity to bid and buy this little fella. Is it a cock or a hen? I don't even know. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna be a cockbird. He's out of a and very special co cock from our from us. He's he's bred nothing. He's bred one loft winners, combine winners. He is perfect. He's identical to his brother last year, the the mealy pied cock that you all heard about. His name was the mealy pied cock. He's a full brother to the mealy pied cock, and I'm gonna tell you, he's built as good, if not even better. Steel magnolias, a pure hell of a. Stop, Henry. Where's the black checker? All right. So the we're, white go, we're going to get Tracy's picks. I wanted to just mention something about Tracy's picks because Tra Tracy shared her bachelor picks on her page, and I checked it out. And what a great response you got from your friends, Tracy, helping you out to make your choice. It's funny. She got like 50 suggestions on her page, and we got like five on our page. I can't figure that out, but it is what it is. All right, so do you have them all there? It's not a black checker. There's a black checker. Oh, boy. All three were in that crate, and I thought this was the crate. And uh, hold on, Leah. We're getting it now. Tracy, I'm telling you, the bachelors, they wanted to quit. They wanted to be off the show. Ricky, did you move the black checker outside? <laughs> There's right. that basket underneath there, please, Leah. Come Rita, on. Rita says, I'm just going to read the comments, Ryan, while Dad's figuring it out. The strong will survive no matter the location. Nothing is fair in life for people or pigeons. You are 100% right, Rita. When are you going to start There's flying? Only three in there. <laughs> uh, okay, the we, other three. Okay, let me... We need more women in the sport, Rita, so we invite you. Come Wait, on. Where, where, where did Rita come from? Rita is Richard. Tony's wife, Ryan. Follow the ball. I'm sorry. I'm following Ricky Circles because he's a lost race bird. He doesn't know where the birds are that we're picking. I don't know. I've never seen this one before. All right. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow on tomorrow night's show. So we don't keep everybody. We've almost been on two hours now. So why don't we wrap this up and we can do it tomorrow. Oh, he, 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 he found them now. These are my pants, right? Hey, guess what? I'm a... That's LMR. Hey, guys. Okay. So we're going to show Tracy... We're going to show Tracy's picks one last time. And I'm sure by the time we go Here to we do go. it, the camera will probably be all poopy, but we hope not. 
So here we All go. Right. Okay, so you want the black just, just bring them here. You want, oh. just bring them here. Yeah, gay pie and the black checker, right? Oh, well, you know what? There, that's actually the three I was looking for. Yeah. I thought they were in here when I seen that. It's okay. Right. Just leave that there. And put the, that yeah, just put the basket here. Yeah. There you go. Here we go, Leah. Pick number one. Uh, that's now the these black. It's probably aren't going to sit. Black. On. Sorry, the black they one is bachelor ready number to, one. Uh, bachelor number one. All right. Now I'm going to have a hard time keeping them on my hand, so we're not going to do that today. We're just going to hold them up in front of the camera. Yeah, and then camera's not too great. But there you is see, your... bachelor number one is Carl. Everybody, big applause for Carl. He's a great sport. <laughs> bachelor number two, Ryan. That's a gorgeous hen. Bachelor number two. Bachelor number two is Ken. A big round of applause for Ken. Also been a great sport. Oh boy. Here's the one. Oh, and what a pigeon. Bachelor number three, Neville. You've been a a great sport as well. Okay, Tracy. Now's your time. Who have you picked? Number one, number two, or number three? James says to the pie. Who have you picked? It's it's the tension Tracy. is so tight right now. Tracy said she picked McMoose. <laughs> McMoose doesn't have wings. <laughs> so that's a wrong or, answer. I mean, hey. You can take this little guy. Look at well, it. That's a fantail. So, no, you can't take uh, Fanny No, Mae. you can't take that one. Uh, Dominic's going to want her. Forget Dominic. It's ours Fan now. Fanny <laughs> Mae. What, what Fanny I Mae will be making an appearance on the Pioneer One Loft landing board this summer. Yeah. You get to see her now, all grown up. What uh, I fail, uh, what I want to say is not one of you viewers. If you can see this pad, show me what you see. I see cute. <laughs> no, I oh. see a perfect dropping. Perfect. That's what I look at. And that's what we're looking at at the Pingo yeah. Pigeon Bingo and the Square. Other, the other thing, too, is she dropped the one on the side, off the side earlier. And... Ricky's going to eat it on camera. No, he will not. Perfect oh. in the hands. You should be able to put that in your pocket and walk away. So I'm just saying, perfect health. Can you guys perfect. tell we're a little obsessed with uh, pigeon poop? Apparently we are. Tracy says, well, I sent a you a sign. picture of me giving it a rose. All right. Well, if you just sent it now, Tracy, I can't get it on the camera. But I will definitely make All a right. post announcing to everybody who you've picked later on. So just let us know who you've picked in the comments. I'll do the drum roll and announce it, and then I will show the photo in the post. So go ahead. Uh, what did you? What was her? What was her name? Fanny Mae. Fanny Mae. I'm sure Do Dominic's going to be calling me saying, "I got to get that bird off you." Dominic's uh, a fanto man. He's uh, he's uh, a perfect specimen of a perfect fanto breeder. This man knows, he's he nuts. knows him inside and out. He's nuts. See, I yeah, I want to get him on a show today yeah, he, to show some stuff that what he does about lacing the tails and all that. All that stuff. Stuff. Leah, go ahead. Uh, Bill Bulgara says, nice dropping. Who would know that that's yeah. like a nice compliment? Thank you, Bill. We well, thought they were pretty good, too. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I just brought to you, when I seen the bird had the dropping, I looked and I go, oh, perfect. But she had another one, I'm going, oh, perfect. And that's a sign of health. And then you see the young one here. She's out of her nest. We put her here. Mm -hmm. She's printing herself. She's that's all a sign of feeling health. good. Feeling good. Comfortable. Comfortable. Okay, guys. Yeah. Tracy has made her decision. You guys don't know because you can't see it. So let's okay, do Okay, let's it. I'm gonna drum roll. She's, she's no. Leah's got the sound effects. Drum roll. Do the sound okay, effect. good. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Ooh, never Tracy, long bottom. Your bachelor that you picked is bachelor number 
three, all yeah. the way from Grief Finder number three, Neville Longbottom. Yeah, the blue pipe. Congratulations! Pie oh yeah, he's a blue pipe. White flake. That's a nice pigeon. What a pigeon this is. Oh, he's nice. He's super. I, what a bird. I got goosebumps. Tracy, I'm not giving it to you. The hell with you. <laughs> Look at the white, nice white flakes on him. He got the beautiful white flakes in the wing. And I'll tell you, his feather is so soft. His one pin tail, vents are, vents are strong and nice and big. He's got a little piting on the head. A little bit of war paint for yeah. the road. And you know what he comes with? Something very special. AU Pioneer 112011. He's got so, a Pioneer band. He's going to fly that race. Tracy, not well. only is he flying for the Pioneer One Loft, but he will also be flying in the Pioneer Elite Gold Band Series. Uh, Robert Daughtry <laughs> says, I, uh, Robert Daughtry wants to take uh, Bachelor Number Two, which was, I think, uh, who is that? Carl? No, that was Ken. Ooh, we got a wild one. All right. That's okay. Let's let him be. Let him be. So, Oops. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Ricky couldn't have left him. We had to catch him. But that, that's Ricky Wild, eh? It's All like right. the nature of things with David this, Suzuki. This, this is a nice bird, but I'm happy she didn't take number two. Because number two is a real nice bird. <laughs> oh, wait. Let's see. Hey, hey, you know uh, what's great about number, number one? Or this one that Tracy's picked? Hmm. I get to beat your ass with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Frank like Icorn wants to know what. Thing? Sorry, hmm? if I can. Go ahead. Please. Go ahead. Wants to know what the breeding is on it, and then we're going to wrap the show up because it's nine o'clock, and I got to go. <laughs> a lot of work still to go, guys. We got a lot of squares to sell. What's the breeding on it? Uh, if I were to show you Ricky's paper trail of breeding <laughs> things, you guys would have a laugh. But uh, it'll be out of something special. I will say. I'm going to say this right now. Bring the other, uh, the next No, Bring just before other. we wrap this up. In that oh, point, look at her. Look, look. Oh, in the pioneer, in the stuff. pioneer one loft, right now, mm -hmm. there is not, there is not a pigeon that has that quality in the feather, but there's only one pigeon that beats that one. There's only one, and here's your man. <laughs> there he is. You're able, everyone is able to purchase this guy and fly in the Pioneer race. Take a look at him. Oh, <laughs> he's so damn nice. His number, AU, Pioneer, 112015. And what's great is I got the two bullets in the gun that are going to destroy you. The Leah, people, what a note. Look people, at this. The people seen him about a week or so ago. Take a look at him. Well, there he is. Okay, so Tracy, congratulations. You can pick uh, whatever name you want. You don't have to call him Neville Longbottom. You can call him whatever it is that you want. Antonio, you're, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening and for having a nice, healthy debate back and forth. Um, please buy your bingo squares, FIPA.ca, 15 25 or $50. We're giving away a benzene clock. We're giving away cash prizes. We're going to have some fun for the month of May in celebration of loft manager Richard's birthday. Uh, I think we want to we say that all birds must be in okay. by the ninth, by the way, for the one loft race, which is loft manager Richard's birthday. If you guys are bringing a cake, you got to bring it either on the ninth all, or before the ninth. All I want to say is please. Why did you interrupt this, her? This 52 years. But, but please, but why would you do that? Don't tell the government that because they're going to cut I my know. pension. We'll cut your pension mm -hmm. off. Don't worry, guys. Fifty-two candles. Buy a cake, make a cake, whatever it is. We're going to have the score. All the cakes are going to be judged by this guy. And he eats anything. Remember, cakes are judged on creativity, taste, look, funness, name. I want you to name your cake. Name your there, cake. There you go. And name remember, your cake. I'm I'm hoping somebody builds a Glen Thornley cake. There you go. Um, tomorrow, what's on the docket with Pioneerland? What are we doing tomorrow? So everybody knows when we're going to be on, what we're doing, feeding, banding, what are we doing? Uh, tomorrow we're getting back to the Glen Thornley hurdles. We're going to get back to that. Uh, the birds will be fed in the morning. We're going to have a light feeding. Birds will go out into the Avery, and then again around 6 p.m., the Glen Thornley hurdles will commence. We're going to have Glen Thornley hurdles tomorrow. And then uh, we're going to have the Glen Thornley finals 
on Tuesday. Wednesday, Pioneer Birds, knock on wood, will be starting to go out. That's the Red Wings. We're going to work on that. Uh, Yellow Jackets the following day. So we got a busy week here in Pioneer Village. Yes, we do. We have to get our clocks set up, et cetera, et cetera. Jay-Z is in the house. Says, Sorry, I'm late. I got some boxes. Way to go, Joseph. Thank you guys for your support. To everybody who's bought Bingo Squares, we really do appreciate it. Lots of time to buy them. The first round of Bingo doesn't start until May the 11th. So you guys got quite a bit of time to head on over to FIPA.ca. Take a look at the bingo board. Take a look at the squares and take your pick. Plan for a good cause. So that's, uh, if I can say something, is that Joseph from New Jersey? Yes. It is. W right oh, now, North no. Carolina. <laughs> he's, he, he's already won the whole game, guys. If you're going to beat Joseph, to beat Joseph, here's the secret. Don't just stand there and start picking. Okay? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, I know last year, uh, Joseph, uh, he picked, I think it was Joseph. He picked a bird uh, in the uh, pick bird races that was the very last bird on the week before. Mm -hmm. The very last bird. No one picked it, but he picked it for 20 bucks. And the week after, I think he won 3100 bucks with that bird. The worst, bird came worst to first. The sky has no limit. Ricky's been on fire. You've heard more stories than you can shake a stick at. Forget Walt Disney, hey? The magical, wonderful world of Disney? Hell with that. We got LMR. You guys have been great. Lee had bounced out the board. The one lot birds are on the rebound to come back. Sure, we got respiratory. Sure, we got a little bit okay. of wet canker. So We're getting rid of that. Just Hold wanna, on. I just want to say something. I'm trying to end the show. But if guess you're going to make a cake for this, make sure you make it look like there's some perfect droppings, pigeon <laughs> droppings going around okay. the cake. But okay. don't make a drop. Guys, make it this like. is what we're going to do for you tonight. I've signed myself out. I'm Ryan from Pioneer. You know me. Lee is done. Recky, you end the show. No, don't do that. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm, a, I'm alone. No, no. You see how it is? It's so hard no, to wait. end it. Look at Dominic. <sighs> it's, so nice. hard to, it's so hard to end it because we're having fun. You guys have been great. Thank you guys for your interaction and your oh, questions wait. and your, Put your comments. Tail up. Put your tail up. There you go. And now we have a name for little Fannie Mae. Tracy's got her bachelor. When will the bachelor be going in the loft, Ryan? Is that is it ready tomorrow, or we're going to wait, or what? End of the week, or what are we doing? By, by May, May the 9th. May the 9th. A little more May time. The ninth. All right. So uh, your bachelor will be in the loft on the 9th. So you have got a lot of time to think of a name if you want to change the name. Tracy says, thanks, guys. I learned a lot tonight. You were very welcome. Michael Peebler says good night on YouTube. Good night to our YouTube friends. Good night to our Facebook friends. That's Ryan and Richard, and I'm Leah, and we're from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario. Have we a want good you guys night. to have good a fantastic week. night, and we will see you.